Got this piece of tissue. So let's open this up and see what we got. Ooh, actually I do hear a little coming out of the intake. New birthday present from Feisty Kate. Look at that, repping the Corolla. Anyway, welcome back everybody. Or if you're new to the channel, welcome. You've fallen right into the middle of a series on this oil burning Corolla behind me. We're trying to get this Corolla to stop burning oil in the cheapest and easiest way possible. Even if that means tearing down the entire engine and re-ringing it. We've tried several chemical additives. We've changed the PCV valve. We've scoped the cylinders a few times. We've changed the valve stem oil seals and we've done a compression test. There's a link in the corner right here if you wanna go back and watch those videos before you watch this one. Before we go further with the oil additive experiments, which are really aimed at freeing up low tension piston rings, we have a growing group of viewers who think the head gasket or something else might be the culprit. Now we know already we've ruled out the PCV valve and the valve stem oil seals, but there's still the chance that it could be the head gasket. So it has been recommended by many viewers that we do a leak down test to make sure we're on the right track. So among some other things, we're gonna do a leak down test today. What is a leak down test? A leak down test is basically where you inject compressed air into a cylinder while it's at top dead center and it will tell you how bad your compression leak is and hopefully help you pinpoint where the compression is leaking from. Sources of a compression leak could be the valves, the head gasket, the piston rings, or the cylinder walls themselves. The test should be performed while the engine is at normal operating temperature. So we're gonna crank the engine and let it run for a little while. And while we do that, we're gonna make a few simple observations that could tell us similar things to what the leak down test might. I've had several viewers request this first observation, and it's simply to take the oil filler cap off and check to see if anything is blowing out of it. All right, let's start by pulling out the dipstick and seeing if we can feel any air blowing out of there. Got this piece of tissue. All right, now let's move to the oil filler cap. Of course, let me put the dipstick back first. Oh, did you hear the engine change? I don't know if you heard that, but the idle dropped as soon as I opened that. Let's see what this looks like. Oh, yeah. You think we got some blow by? Now, I don't know if you could hear that. Let me take this microphone off and let you hear the difference in the engine when I take that off. the leak down test but before we do the leak down test since a lot of people have mentioned they think there's a head gasket leak I'm gonna really quickly go over just a couple of things that you can check just to kind of see if it's likely your head gasket if you know how an engine works you have coolant and oil that run through holes in the head this is the head that these pipes are hooked into and this valve cover gasket sits on top and you have holes in the head that some are for coolant and some are for oil. And then you have a head gasket that sits between the head and the engine block, which is down there. So if there is a rupture in the head gasket, oil could leak out from the head gasket as well. It could leak into the cylinder and be burnt, or it could leak outside of the cylinder and just run down the engine. Now, since the head gasket basically confines the oil and the coolant to their own channels, if the head gasket gets ruptured, often the oil and the coolant mingle so like we already did we pulled off this oil filler cap if you have a ruptured head gasket a lot of times the coolant will leak into the oil and if 
oil and coolant, which is, you know, basically water and, and some, is it sugar alcohols? You know what I mean. Water and coolant. When water or a substance with water in it mixes with oil, it makes what's called an emulsion. You might remember that from high school science or something. And it basically turns oil into like a white gooey mess or a light colored gooey mess. So instead of it being runny oil, it becomes like Crisco or grease or something. And it will often congeal around the top of your oil filler cap. So this would be caked with some sort of kind of tannish goo, light colored goo, lighter than oil at least. And you can see it's not. So we don't have any coolant mingling with our oil. Then you can also check the coolant reservoir for oil getting in the coolant and since oil is lighter than water you'll see oil floating on the surface of the coolant so basically just pop the top on it and oftentimes you'll see you'll see an oily residue on the tube my reservoir is actually you know way down in there so you can't actually see the top of the liquid inside but another thing that will usually happen if you have a head gasket leak is you will lose coolant and I do not lose any coolant I think I've topped the coolant off in this once I think it was down you know maybe a cup or something in a couple of years I've owned it which is normal evaporation and I topped it off I don't know how, how long ago maybe four or five months ago and it's still at the top line so I do not believe that I have a head gasket leak of course that's still possible but you just saw the blow by we're getting by the amount of pressure that's coming out of the oil filler cap and dipstick tube so that said let's go ahead with our leak down test while it's still running since we need to do this at normal operating temperature we're going to go ahead and make sure we have everything we need for the test so let's go over here i got my tool kit this will be used for turning the crank around and removing the spark plugs Here's the leak down test kit. I got some tissue that we just used earlier. I saw this on Eric the car guy. We'll use this to help us find top dead center. I'll show you how that works in a little bit. Rags, of course, keep our hands clean. Then aside from this, we of course need an air compressor. So we're gonna go up, turn on our air compressor and turn the pressure up to 100 PSI. I keep the air compressor up here in the attic, which overhangs the carport. By the way, my wife picks up furniture off the side of the road and refinishes it. Sometimes she sells it, sometimes we keep it. So, turn this on. There we are at 100 PSI. Now let's throw our hose down. Turn the engine off. Unhook the negative on our battery. Remove our spark plugs. You've seen this before, I'll just time lapse this. Now we're gonna to find top dead center on cylinder number one on the compression stroke. So we'll go down there and put a 19 millimeter on crankshaft bolt and turn it until this tissue blows out. Just gonna lightly put this tissue in here. And what that tissue will tell us is when the piston is coming up on the compression stroke. Because if it's not on the compression stroke, it would be on the exhaust stroke and any of the compressed air would go out the exhaust valves and not through the spark plug hole. So that tissue should blow out or come close to blowing out when we come up on the compression stroke. All 
Well, I think I saw it move. Now the good thing about finding top dead center on cylinder number one is when you know you're compressing, you also have the notch to go by. So we'll just get that notch to line up with the top dead center mark on the timing housing, which is, is right there in the center of your screen. Right there. And that should be top dead center. So we'll test it by sticking a little wooden dowel in there. That's one more thing I forgot to mention. Chopstick or a dowel or something like that. Something that's not going to scratch anything up. Something wooden or plastic maybe and clean. Should be right at the top. And we are. See how that doesn't really go anywhere? That one's at the top. That one's all the way down. All right, so we're ready to start our leak down test. So let's open this up and see what we got. So the first thing we're going to do is feed this down into our spark plug well. Just hand tighten that. I should probably put some oil on that o-ring first, but well, let's do that just in case. Now we're going to hook up our leak down test kit, or the gauges, to our 100 PSI compressor source. And I think we pull this out. And now we're going to zero it. So we want to get this needle all the way over here to where it is zero. So we'll turn this. There we go. Come on now. There we are, right on the money. And then we'll lock that. And now we'll hook it up to the tube that's in the spark plug well. Come on up. So here's what we look like. Cylinder number one is in the green. So that means we have pretty decent compression in cylinder number one. I can hear it leaking a little bit, but it's not too bad. And we can pinpoint where it's leaking from. Let's see if it's coming through the crankcase here. Yes, I can hear it in the crankcase. Now, if it were coming through the head gasket, it would be creating bubbles in our coolant reservoir down here. And I don't hear it. I really couldn't see bubbles if we had any, but like I said, I don't think there's any reason to check that. We could take the radiator cap off, but it's hot, so you really shouldn't. Another place to check is the throttle body. So we'd remove the hose from the throttle body here and we'd listen to see if we hear air leaking out there. And that would tell us if we have an intake valve leak because air might be leaking by the intake valve and the noise would travel through the intake and out the throttle body. We can also listen at the exhaust pipe and that would tell us if we have an exhaust valve leak for the same reasons as the intake valve. And there's nothing there. Just for giggles, we'll go ahead and remove this breather hose here, just to see while we're doing the leak down test if we can hear it. Another way to do this if you don't have a leak down tester is also, and several people have mentioned this in the comments by the way, you can just hook compressed air straight into your spark plug holes using the same tube, but just hook it straight up to the air compressor and let compressed air blow in, and then go around and listen to where you hear air escaping from. So I'll just listen to this. No sign of air escaping through the intake, so intake valves are okay. Let's move on to the next cylinder. Now it's good to know your firing order when you're doing this test. And in this particular engine, it fires one, three, four, two. 
So the next one coming up to compression is number three. So we're going to jump from number one to number three and we're going to put our stick in the top there and we're going to turn the crank until that gets to the top of its stroke. Let me go ahead and unhook the air on this. All right, that appears to be the very top of the stroke. Let's remove the hose from this cylinder. This should be at the very bottom now, and it is. Snug it up. All right, now we're rolling. Our gauge is back to zero. Let's hook it up. This is cylinder number three. What do we got there? is good we have almost no leakage so i'm not even going to go around and listen to where it's escaping from because it basically doesn't have any leakage so on to cylinder number four because it's the next one on the compression move the stick to number four crank us on around all right that's at the top of the stroke i'm going to give it just a hair more all right let's swap out the hose Snug. Our gauge is back at zero. All right, there is a slight leak in that one. However, it's still in the green. You can hear it. Oh, I take that back. It just sealed itself. Did you see that? I could hear it leaking and then it sealed itself. It was like a shh. So, cylinder number four is looking good. All right, now to the last one, number two. Woo! Uh, let's take this off first. So, we need to back up a little, and I know some of you are like, you can't do the timing backward. We're gonna do the timing backward just a little bit. Just back up just a hair. That looks good. Swap these out. Cylinder number two, to get it snugged up. You can see we're at zero again. All right, we do have a little bit of a leak right now, but again, it is in the green, and there it just sealed itself. I don't know, y'all let me know what you think. All of the cylinders seem to be in the green, or better. And the leak... I don't know. Sounds like it's going through the crankcase. I don't know, let me listen in cylinder number one and see if it sounds like it's leaking across from one cylinder to another. That's another way you can tell it's a head gasket. If you can hear it leaking from one cylinder into the other, there might be a rupture between them. No, I don't hear anything. Let's see if number three. Nope. We can also take this tissue and cover each of the holes to see if the sound changes. Uh, it's not gonna leak all the way over here, but. Nope. It's not crossing between cylinders. And it's not coming out of the intake. Well, actually, actually I do hear a little coming out of the intake. Let's adjust, let's adjust this a little. See if it changes, all right? Losing a little there, so let's go backward. And that tightened it up. I don't know if you saw that. Let me do that again. I'm going to move the crank just a little bit and you can see the needle move as one of the valves opens up a little bit. See there? And I'll take it back a little and it seals it back up. So, all right, well, while we're this deep into it, let's go ahead and do another compression test. I got a lot of people that think the compression test we did before was faulty. So let's try it again, really quick. For the compression test, we're gonna start by pulling the EFI plug, the electronic fuel injection, so that we don't inject any fuel into the cylinders and wash the cylinders with gasoline, basically. So it says this one right here is the EFI fuse. It's 15 amp right there. A little fuse puller right here. Grab that and pull that out if we can. 
Come on. Yep, I need to go get some needle nose pliers. Hmm, tough one. Yeah, let's put it where we won't lose it. Now we need to hook the battery back up so we can crank it. Doke. Now here is our compression test kit. It's just a one-way tube, one-way hose. It's got a Schrader valve in it that only lets the pressure go one way so that it holds whatever pressure the cylinder makes on this gauge. And obviously there's the gauge. And then this is the pressure release right here. So installs the same way. It's got a little O-ring. It's already kind of greasy, so I'm not going to worry about it. And we're just going to start with cylinder number one. Screw it in the spark plug hole. Compression tests are pretty quick. Kind of get it snug in there. I'm going to hook it up. And obviously the gauge is upside down right now, but I can flip that in editing. So I'm going to go around inside the car and crank it. And you guys watch the compression. What might happen is when I start cranking it, this might move out of frame. I think that's happened before. So I'll, I'll back up a little just in case it moves around. And of course it moved. And of course I forgot to take the wrench off of the crank. So we spun that off as well, but no harm done. So what have we got here? So what is that? There's 210, there's 240. So we are at almost 230 it looks like. Let's move on to number two. I know you guys are like, that's way too much compression for that engine at least the pressure. But according to the manual, this 1ZZFE is supposed to have about 218 PSI compression. So that's actually not that far off. Cylinder number two. Hopefully it will stay where you can see it and not be blinded by this light. All right, what are we looking like again? We are right about at 2.30 again. All right, let's go to cylinder number three. Wait a minute. Maybe some of y'all will notice this. It might be more like 2.20 because this isn't dropping all the way down to the zero. Now, it does drop all the way down to where that white starts, so maybe that is approximately zero. 30, 60, but that could mean it's fudging on the high side. We'll see. Well, here we are in cylinder number three. Looks like the same thing. If nothing else, we have even compression, that's for sure. So it's showing 230 again, which might be 220, which might be 218. All right, well, let's go on to cylinder number four. Yet again, and that one's actually even closer to 240, but we'll say about 230, 235, which, you know, might be 225, 220, who knows. But looks like the compression's relatively even and looks like we have decent compression. So I'm just gonna throw this all back together off camera and then we'll talk about it. Oh, by the way, here's the plugs again in order for those who like to see them. They definitely got some oil on them, don't they? So what have we learned? It seemed we had pretty decent compression, and I know a lot of people are gonna say that compression was way too high. First of all, it is a cheap compression gauge, and it could be off, say, 10 or 20 PSI maybe. But someone actually mentioned that the layer of carbon on top of the piston can actually be increasing our compression. Say you have a 10 to one compression ratio, so this space of 10 is compressed into one, basically, and if you have a layer of carbon on top of the piston and you compress it, that compressed space is even smaller. So you've increased the compression a lot. The book says the compression on that 1ZZ FE engine should be 218 PSI. So it looked like we were showing 230. I'd say we could probably knock that down to at least 220 PSI just by some error in the cheap compression gauge. But it might be about 230 PSI if we include the carbon buildup in there. So that aside, the compression looked pretty good. Now let's talk about the leak down test. Okay, that was my first leak down test. I've never done one before, so I might be missing something. 
If I am missing something, feel free to mention it in the comments, but as far as I can tell, it turned out pretty well. I mean, it says we're holding decent compression, so if anything, I think the engine is definitely not toast. If we can't fix what's wrong with it with these chemicals, I think simply changing out the pistons and rings will do the job. So I'm not worried about throwing money at a bad engine right now. I think we know enough now that it's okay to just go ahead with the rest of the chemical experiments. So in the next video, we're doing the Berryman's B12 chem tool test, where we douse the cylinders with the chemical, and then we drive the car around close to red line for 20 minutes. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful in some way, please consider hitting the like button. And as always, thanks for watching, and I hope to see y'all in the next one. Well, I was just on my way to work, and making a left turn. There were two lanes of left turns, and a guy in a jacked up brand new Tacoma, young, young kid, knocked me in the rear. He was on my left, just verged into the lane. We pulled over. I thought it was worse than it was because it gave the car a good jolt. But uh, I told him if he'd just give me his name and number, I'd let him know how much it cost, and he could just send it to me and I'd fix it. He said he, he always has problems on that turn. I, I don't get that, you know, <laughs> driving a brand new jacked up truck with a, uh, I mean, winch and one of those big armored bumpers and stuff, all the off-road stuff, and you can't make a simple left turn and stay in your lane. Apparently, often enough that you say, I always have problems with turns like that. Anyway, so she's not perfect anymore. Of course, it did zero damage to his car because he had that big armored bumper.